It's nine o'clock. The bell rings. Student enters. Students enter the classroom filled with rows of computers. They sit. They take out their paper notebooks. They're not allowed to turn on the computers until they have completed the note taking. The notes are displayed on an overhead in large black and white font. A few years ago, the sage on the stage created the overhead notes for his introductions to computing called information processing. The resources for the daily contents are products of the teacher's brain and textbook. The students tend to ask the all too common single question, will this be on the test? The students do rote memorization of the facts from their notes to pass the weekly test. According to Fulton, classrooms of today resemble their ancestors of 50 and 100 years ago much more closely than they do today's hospitals, operating rooms, business offices, manufacturing plants, or scientific labs. If you put a doctor of 100 years ago in today's operating room, she or he would be lost. Yet if you place a teacher of 100 years ago into one of today's classrooms, he or she wouldn't skip a beat, according to Moldash. Moldash, excuse me. This classroom is not an exception. Even though it is a computer classroom, the transfer of information is still done in the traditional fashion. One Friday, the teacher enters the classroom, eager to prepare for the up-and-coming class. The information processing class was scheduled to begin in about 30 minutes. Putting the overhead on the projector, the teacher attempts to turn it on, on only to discover the bulb was burnt out. As he prepared to venture to the office to get another bulb, he starts to think about the classroom, his ability to make web pages, and how the computer might be a better way to give the students their notes. So in the remaining 30 minutes before the class begins, he quickly took the day's notes and placed them into a website. He wrote the URL for the daily notes on the board, and when the class entered, they were told to turn on their computers, go to the URL, and copy down their notes. This was the beginning of the first online course in the division. Over the next couple of weeks, the teacher created notes, then tried a test online, and in time transferred his approach to teaching, and a complete course was created. This was the catalyst and the environment in which the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School was designed. Education needs to reflect the reality of the students living in the information age. The burnt out overhead projector was a catalyst for the creation of the first online course and a proposal to develop other courses and in time has grown into the largest cyber school in Saskatchewan. The Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School is an attempt to answer the challenge of transforming education to welcome the digital native and information age. This attempt required the sage on the stage approach to be transformed into the guide in the side. Digital immigrant teachers can continue to think that it's possible with a dated system of education to compete within the four walls of our face-to-face -face schools with the information age, which is the reality of the digital natives. An information age with connected students having instant information, communications, multimedia, and entertainment and social networking tools is a new era that no teacher can realistically compete with using the current educational approaches. In the past, technology has been used as a supplement to education. As teachers become more comfortable with technology, it becomes support for education. But until it becomes integrated with education, we will not be preparing the students for the world in which they will live. We need to connect our students and connect them to their world. Evan and Airfed have best described the catalyst for this progressive initiative. Nonetheless, students themselves are changing because of their use and reliance on the internet. They are coming to schools with different expectations, different skills, and different resources. In fact, our most internet savvy students told us their schools, teachers, and peers are at times frustrating, illiterate, naive, and even afraid of the online world. Indeed, students who rely on the internet for school, who can conceive, of, who cannot conceive of using it for their social, their schoolwork, may ultimately force schools to change to better accommodate them. Levin and Arfed point out that many schools and teachers may not, may not have re yet recognized much responded to the new way students communicate and access information over the internet. They are the wired, wired world children. They have grown up surrounded by TVs, mobile phones, computers, and the internet. These kids have new needs, new capacities, new capabilities. They are significantly different in nature from the students born before the existence of the wired world. The Media Awareness Group found that of the Canadian families surveyed, 82% say they have, use, they have used the Internet, and 73% report that they have Internet access in the home. 
The business community has started to recognize the need for students to acquire internet skills as stated in the report of the Canadian eBusiness Opportunity Roundtable in 2001. Much of our attention today is focused on attracting, attracting and retaining the existing pool of e-talent, while not enough focus on cultivating the next generation of e-talent. Internet li literacy, the foundation of skills for e-business acumen, may be, must be laid in elementary, secondary and post-secondary institutions across Canada. The SCCS is a subsystem of the Greater Saskatoon Catholic School System. Every part's worth does not simply depend upon its role in its localized subsystem. It also depends on the relationship with the rest of the parts, the subsystems, and the entire system, as well as its relationship with the potential parts that are not yet part of the system, as well as, par as past history and relationships of the system. The Greater Saskatoon Catholic System Executive Council is comprised of five superintendents, each responsible for programming and personnel in his or her geographical area of the city, and an assistant director and the director of education. In 1999, this council recognized the change in their students' world and the pressure to meet the demands for this change. Recognized, fueled action, so began the development of the Saskatoon Catholic School Division. Approximately 85% of the students currently registered in the SCC, SCCS, or the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School, are taking one or two online courses, pursuing the remainder of their courses in a face-to-face -face school within the Saskatoon School Division. 10% of the students are recent high school graduates who have upgraded their marks, who are upgrading their marks, or taking the remaining classes needed to fill their grade 12 graduation requirements. The remaining 5% of the students are from out of the division or out of the country. The Director of Education is appointed by the Board of Education. As Chief Executive Officer, the Director is the Senior Advisor to the Board in all aspects of the division's operation. Below him or her, there are three major divisions. Learning Services, Human Resources, and Act, uh, Administrative Services. The Learning Services Division is headed by five superintendents who report directly to the Director of Education. Each superintendent is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of all the schools in one of the five administrative units. These operations involve facilitating the development, implementation, and maintenance of school programs, student services, curricula, teaching, and learning practices with each administrative unit. Each unit is made up of a mainstream high school and a number of elementary schools. The Human Resources Service Division is headed by a superintendent of education who is responsible for personnel, support functions, staff professional development, occupational health and safety. This superintendent reports directly to the Director of Education. The Administrative Services Division is headed by a superintendent as well who is responsible for directing the financial affairs of the Board of Education and the provisions of the, faci of the facilities. This superintendent also reports to the Director of Education. Divisions are, divisions are made within the administrative structure by an executive council. This council is responsible for the day-to-day -day Board of Education operations. The council consists of the six Directors of Education, the Director of Administrative Services, and the Director of Education, who is also the Chair of the Council. There is also an administrative forum which, prov which provides for consultation, communication, and integration of efforts in planning and management. This forum is made up of the senior administration of the division, superintendents, consultants, principals, assistant principals, and the director of education consult can all be members of this forum. This forum is chaired by the director of education, members, and the members may differ from meeting to meeting. The members for each of the meetings are, des are designated by the director of education. The principal's meetings are system-wide are system -wide and provide opportunity for a large group identity, communications, and direct involvement in the school division development. The principals then meet with their in-school administrative teams, which normally consist of the assistant principals and principals in the elementary schools, and the two assistant principals and the principal in the high schools. Teaching and support staff meetings are conducted within each school on a monthly basis. At the elementary school level, these are chaired by principals, while at the high school level, they're chaired by the elected staff presidents. For communication to be effective in large mainstream high schools, it is necessary to have an advisory council. It is made up of department heads who are appointed by the principal of this school. Each department has a weekly meeting to assist in communication. The Saskatoon Catholic School, school uh, 
the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School started a project which was placed within a mainstream high school. It was placed within a high school because they had the physical space to house the pod. At the beginning, the project was run by a teacher who was appointed as a project leader. This project leader at the time was involved in the organizational structure of the division by being a staff member of the Holy Cross High School. As the project grew and the demands for policy making and future planning expanded, the project leader became an assistant principal at the hosting high school. During this growth period, two superintendents and the principal of the hosting high school were all involved in the decision making of the, of the cyber school. At this time, the administrative structure for, the, for decisions making has shifted to one superintendent and the assistant principal in charge of the program has more students than the hosting high school. The teaching staff of the online school was recruited because of their content expert expertise within courses rather than their facilities with technology. All teaching staff was and is part time and has taught and has taught conventional classes in the school division. Tunison and Noonan in two thousand and and 10 explain it best, a course development model in which teachers develop empathy for students' frustrations as they work online. Each teacher was required to develop both the content and the technical aspects of their course. By August of 2000, the first four courses were ready to be delivered in the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School. During this first year of online course offerings, a total of about 156 students took advantage of this educational opportunity. The revolution had began and it can't be stopped, so rather than beating, being beaten down by technology, teachers must use it, use it, and use it again to do what schools are supposed to be about, learning about life and the world around us. Regan in 2002 made this quote. With very little advertisement, the school grew rapidly. The students were sharing their cyber experiences with their peers, and by August of 2001, eight courses were ready and 310 students enrolled. 2002 school year, we were up to 559 students with 16 courses. 2003, 2004, 19 courses and over 800 students. 21 courses and 1,000 students in 2004, 2005. This trend of growth continued to this day, as shown in the 2006 2000 school year, which has an enrollment of about 1,500 students and 24 courses. The demographics of the students were studied by Tunison and have not changed since their study. Only, a number of, only the number of students have increased. Approximately 85% of the students came from within our school division. Because of this, Bernhardt in 2001 stated that the cyber school is a hit with the students and according to Bocklischuk, the school which has been honored with several international awards is a source of pride for the Catholic Board of Education. Knowles terms the school as a quantum leap in terms of teacher recognizing the need for forsaking some traditional methods of teaching while getting to where the students are and making it very empowering for them. By almost all measures, the school has been considered a success. Since the school's inception, Darren Cannell, which is me, has been the project leader, assistant principal, and the administrator. The greatest, greater Saskatoon Catholic school chose him as the person who would design, implement, and administer and grow the initiative. One of the common questions I get is how does someone with a phys ed degree and taught art for nine years in high school end up running the largest cyber school in Saskatchewan? What had ended up happening is I was given a grant by the federal, by the provincial government to create an online art gallery. So what I did is I learned HTML by reverse engineering HTML pages. So I got a web page, I looked at the source and I figured out how they actually made web pages and then I created the first online art gallery in Saskatchewan. With this experience of being able to build web pages, I was getting known as someone who knew something about computers and it became a hobby of mine and I was very interested so I started to learn more and more. And the school at the time asked if I would be willing to teach some grade nines information processing during the lunch hour. Which I said I don't have a problem doing that and I thoroughly enjoyed it so then they asked if I would be willing to teach a grade 10 information processing class. I said that was fine and I started to set up that course. As I was teaching that course and I put all my notes onto overheads and the students would come in and they would sit down and they would start to write down the notes. When they're finished that they could turn on their computers and then start the assignments for the day. 
what ended up happening is a burnt out overhead projector was what was responsible for myself trying out web pages for teaching online courses. So what I did is I had a burnt out overhead projector and I decided that I would, because I knew how to make web pages, I'd put the notes right onto the computers. So I put the notes onto the computer and the students came in and started to write down the notes right from their computers. And after a little while I thought the note taking was just a waste of energy and wasn't a worthwhile exercise, so I said the notes are there, how about if we try putting the assignments on? So then I created the assignments and after a little while I created the tests and after about one semester I had a complete information processing course online. My principal at the time was very excited about this and asked if it was possible for some students to take the course from a distance, not within the class. So I would have 24 students in my class and a certain number of students who would then take the class from the library or from their home computer or wherever they wished. So then this was this, the first online distance course taught in our division. So once this was being taught, then they asked me if I would be willing to explore the option of doing that in other subjects. So I went and did a little bit of research and did a proposal that it was possible if this is the way we approached it. And after a little bit of uh, red tape and a little bit of decision making, they decided that let's try the online high school. They put me in charge of it. And in eight years later, we're now teaching approximately 3,500 students a semester online. That is the birth of the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School and how someone with a phys ed degree and an art background ended up being the, the project leader and assistant principal and an administrator for the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School. In comparison to the traditional form of education, distance education is a child. This child is trying to be accepted by a threatened adult, the traditional form of education. Most of the research being done on the child is done by an adult who has been unchanged for close to 200 years and is worried about its autonomy within its ivory towers. Education Policy Institute states, distance learning has been around for more than a century. Until recently, however, it is comprised almost entirely of traditional correspondence courses which typically offer low-cost education to working people. With the advent of computers and the dawn of the information age, distance education has moved into the mainstream and this alternate mode of education is beginning to influence the educational status quo. Society is ready for a change to education, but the stakeholders are not willing to let go of a system that has served us well for the two plus centuries. Education needs to reflect the reality of the students living in the information age. Prensky proposes that today's students are no longer the people our education was, system was designed to teach. A couple of quotes from high school students clarify how we feel about the current educational system. We have learned to play school. We study the right facts the night before the test so that we can achieve a passing grade, thus become successful students. It is not attention, attention deficit, I'm just not listening. When I go to school, I have to power down. According to Prensky, Digital immigrants are attempting to teach digital natives with methods that are no longer valid. The only choice made for educators to change the way they, is to change the way they teach. Unfortunately, he says, no matter how much immigrants may wish it, it is highly unlikely that digital natives will go backwards. In the first place, it may be impossible. Their brains may, be already, may already be different. Further to this point, Ferdick states, teachers need to exist in a space that the students exist, understand their culture. You have to have credibility if you'll have no credibility, excuse me, if you're not where they are. They are, they are according to Prensky, using computers, video games, digital music players, video cams, cell phones, and all other toys and tools of the digital age. Today's average college grad have less have spent less than 5,000 hours of their lives reading. Over 10,000 hours take talking on cell phones, but over 10,000 hours playing video games. Not to mention 20,000 hours watching TV and sending 200,000 emails or instant messages. The current approach to education has resulted in a dropout rate of 9.4, and only 28% of the grade 12 high school students believe that schoolwork is meaningful. 21% believe that their courses are interesting and a mere 39% believe that schoolwork will have any bearing on their access in later life. Since the partnership between personal computers and the internet and education, it has become less clear what defines a traditional form of education. Heller, in 2005, 
made a state made the following statement the matrimony of education and computers is truly a marriage made in heaven because the computer has become the ultimate bridge of communication bringing tutorials and students together no matter the time no matter the place no matter the distance to further muddy the water baggies and crooks in 2001 made the following statement the idealism that distance learning and real-time classroom activities are anti podal concepts have become an outdated assumption the use of technology in traditional and alternative education continues to increase which has resulted in a less true form of the traditional education and a fusing of the line between tradition and alternative the greatest spin-off of alternative modes of education is not that they will ultimately take over the traditional face-to-face -face education or weaken it, but they'll provide a revi revised perspective on how it is being currently done, which is a very exciting time. We are in a time of trial and error. If we expect online education to evolve, we have to have an open mind and try different things. Change is never easy which is best illustrated by a couple of statements that I found on a PowerPoint from the Garden Valley School Division. And I'll just read off a couple of these for you. Students today depend on paper too much. They don't have to write on a slate without getting chalk dust. They don't know how to write on a slate without getting chalk dust all over themselves. They can't clean a slate properly. What will they do when they run out of paper? This was a principals association in 1915. Students today depend on that store-bought ink. They don't know how to make their own. When they run out of ink, they'll be unable to write words or ciphers until the next trip to the settlement. This is a sad commentary on modern education. This was in 1928. Students today depend on their expensive fountain pens. They can no longer write with a straight pen and nib. We parents must, allow them, must not allow them to wallow in such luxury. This was 1941, a parent-teachers association. Ballpoint pens will be the ruin of education in our country. Students use devices and then throw them away. The American value of thrift and frugality are being discarded. Businesses and, and banks will never allow such expensive luxuries. This was the Federal Teachers Association in 1950. Why would we ever want the internet for students use? It's just the latest fad. Have them use the library. Uh, this was an employee in 1995. What can you do with an LCD projector that you can't do with an overhead projector? This was a member of School Accountability Com Committee in 1999. Change is never easy or quickly accepted. That's a statement that I made. As part of the Catholic Education Plan, the Catholic Board of Education committed to the review of the future utility, growth, community participation and the cost effectiveness of the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School. A committee consisting of a cyber school principal, assistant principal, the computer consultant, the extended learning consultant, and the superintendent in charge of program began this review. The following is a result of this review. Recommendations for the future. The Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School continues to serve the needs for students currently registered in the Saskatoon Catholic Schools by providing programming options for students in grade 9 to 12, provide enhanced online learning resources for elementary school students, and it further recommends that a steering committee be established to make recommendations for course and content and delivery and development. The second recommendation states, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School will seek to enhance partnerships with, the Saskatoon Learn with Saskatchewan Learning for development and delivery of course and content. The third recommendation, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should seek to expand our partnerships with the Diocese of Saskatoon, the Bishops of Saskatchewan to ensure Catholic education is available to our all regardless of residence. The Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should seek to expand by an increasing effort to deliver program to mature students who have chosen to leave traditional schooling prior to graduation. The fifth recommendation, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should seek to expand into areas of adult education by pursuing partnerships with SIAS and Kelsey Campus. Recommendation number six, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should seek to expand by increasing our efforts towards attracting foreign students wishing to learn to speak English by actively marketing our online ESL course. The Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should be open to establishing partnerships with First Nation committees. The partnership should include course delivery, teacher development, and course development.
Recommendation number eight, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should continue to strive towards the principles of equality and providing diverse learning opportunities to all that seek them. The Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should seek to enhance professional development opportunities for teachers of the Saskatoon Catholic Schools. And the last recommendation, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School should be open to establishing partnerships with other organizations or groups where such partnerships could be deemed as mutually beneficial. The 10 recommend recommendations have been a challenge to actualize. The challenge has been to find the appropriate components of the Saskatoon Catholic School Division to take ownership for each of the different recommendations and how the communication of the information occurs within the existing structure. For each of these recommendations is used to assist in this cyber school development. The cyber school is a subsystem of Holy Cross High School, which in turn is a subsystem of the division. The division also has a number of outside systems which impact the way business is done. The communication paths within the existing structure of the Saskatoon Catholic School Division were designed to allow a forum for principals to speak on behalf of their schools. Principals collect information from their school-based administration team, which is then shared during two main meeting structures. The two main meeting structures are the administrative forum meeting and the principals meeting. If the information needs to be shared with the superintendents and executive directors, it's brought to administrative forum. If it is needed to be shared with other schools, it is brought to the principal's meeting. This system works because each principal is speaking on behalf of his or her school. The issue with trying to use this system for the cyber school means that the principal for Holy Cross High School needs to speak on behalf of his school as well as the cyber school. This is difficult because at times the goals will differ for each school and at times will be in conflict. Decisions for the cyber school cannot be made based on the Holy Cross's view because it provides services to all high school. The rapid growth of the cyber school has resulted in more students taking classes from the cyber school than attend Holy Cross High School. A steering committee can work for course selection, but not for the development of policies and procedures. Ownership is needed for this to be successful. Since the inception, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School was designed to provide system-wide services. Placing a program that provides system-wide services into the administrative structure of a high school was not a new or a unique approach and it continues to work well for a small program. The growth of the cyber school and it being named an actual school in SAS Learning was what has caused some of the issues. Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School Division has been a learning organization for many years. During these years, the structure of communication, division, and meetings has changed. Each time, the change has been made to meet the needs of the division at the time. The introduction of the cyber school into the structure, into the structure might be a catalyst for change, major or minor. As it's at its present growth, the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School would de will deal with over 2,000 students which is a fairly large high school. The size alone warrants a revisiting to the structure or its placement within the existing structure. A, a voice and ownership at the higher level of the assistant principal is needed. This voice, because of the system-wide nature of the program, cannot be one that is attached to another high school. This is necessary to ensure that the development continues in a system-wide approach and is not colored towards one high school or another. The uniqueness of development and delivery of online course materials requires a team approach from the board office level to ensure that questions are answered to allow the program to grow. The team approach will also be of assistance as the program continues to draw more and more students from outside the division. These new Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School Division Catholic Schools Division students will make it necessary to develop policies and procedures to allow them easy access to the program. This Problem significance, this problem's significance lies in the fact that the social systems and their environments change with time, and that in our society this change is accelerating. That is a major problem with today's educational system stems from a lack of realization of the ever-widening development gap between the current state of education and our rapidly changing society. The Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School has developed has developed a replacement system for the timing of the student entry system known as the 150 day timing system. Each stage of this system will be explained, problems will be identified, and will be made on how these can be prevented, alleviated, and resolved within the current administrative structure that exists. The 150 day system allows flexibility for students by allowing them to register at any time of year. A student will be given 150 calendar days calendar days to complete their cyber school course. This means weekends and holidays are included in those 150 days. 
There'll be no semesters recognized within this system. Each teacher in the cyber school will teach 30 students at any given time. Once a course is filled, a waiting list will be created, and when a spot opens, the next student will be placed into the course. Midterm grades will be submitted 75 days from the day the student starts, or the, or the closest work day to that date. The final grades will be submitted 150 days from the day the student starts, or the closest work day to that, to that day. The cyber school teachers will not be working during summer months of July and August. During this time, no access by students will be allowed. Any student who registers later in the school year and their 150 days would normally include times during July and August will have 60 days or a portion thereof added to their active course time after the summer. The students will not be placed in a course or on a waiting list until they have finished the preparation course and get the email with their start and welcome email to the cyber school. The preparation course is a two to three hour course that explains the working of the cyber school. Each and every student is required to complete and show mastery within the preparation course to gain access to their requested courses. The preparation course will not be counted in their 150 days. The Cyber School Tracking Program was designed to fill the tracking holes left by the built-in tracking tools found within WebCT or Blackboard, Outlook, and the Student Attendance System. Tracking the students throughout the 150 days rather than having this standard semester system is a confusing and time-consuming task. WebCT's tracking is designed for post-secondary institutions that run on a semester system and does not answer the needs of a K-12 e-learning facility. Instructors at the K-12 level are required to keep in close contact with their students as well as collect statistics. Post-secondary instructors are not required to track and communicate with students on such a regular basis. This program was conceptualized as a result of the need of the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School. The main requirement involves streamlining all communications and preventing students from falling through the cracks. The Cyber School instructors are allotted one hour of time per course to teach. This includes tracking and grading. The cyber school runs the 150-day schedule as explained before. This 150-day process arose through the need to accommodate as many students as possible. Removing the semester system involved tracking students at various places at various times in different courses. This program enables instructors, administrators, counselors to view where a student is at all times during the course and easily communicate concerns or accolades that arise. This program is innovative and unique for many reasons. First and foremost, the program is unique because it is web-based. This program enhances the student's experience in various ways, not most, important, most importantly by allowing instructors and administrators more time to spend interacting with students instead of tracking progress. Like any progr program, there will be updates and new versions produced as a result of feedback. The program, in its current designs, allows for an infinite number of communication components to be developed. The ability to customize the program to each individual educational facility by simply using their registration database or by using the registration database developed inside the program makes this program absolutely universal and global. This initiative will impact everyone involved with educational institutions from students through to administration. The communication and record keeping is streamlined and easily accessible, not to mention current.